Hey there, my name is Ryan. In this video, we're going to how to play the one to five player game, Parks. Now, Parks is a game where you're going to spend a year in the life of two hikers with the goal of having the best year possible. Now, since you're a hiker, that is going to be measured in national parks you visited, photos you took, and fulfilling a personal goal. The winning player is the player who gets the most points in these areas by the end of the game. You'll be collecting tokens at these trail sites throughout the seasons, and when you reach the end of the track, you perform an action, including the possibility of visiting one of these beautiful parks here at the top. Let's see how it works. In this video, we'll be setting up for a two-player game. So each player selects two hikers of a matching color, in this case blue and pink, and also takes a campfire of that same color and flips it to its lit side. Also, the player who most recently took a hike, or decided randomly, collects the first hiker marker. And the player sitting to their right, in this case there's only one other player, takes the camera. Unfold the main board and place it in an area that can be seen by all players. Next, take the cards labeled Parks, shuffle them, and place them into a stack on the upper right in the area called Parks. Now, reveal the top three cards, placing them into the designated area, which can be seen by these outlined areas of the board. Next, take the gear cards, which are noted by the backpack on the back, shuffle them, and place them into a stack on the bottom right. Then, in the three available spots, just as you do with the park cards, reveal one gear card in each spot. Up next, we're going to take the season cards, which have the flower in the center, and place them, after shuffling, face down into the designated spot on the board. And finally, after shuffling, place the canteen cards into the final spot available on the upper left of the board. Then take one canteen card and give it to each player, placing it face up in front of them so that's easily seen by all players in the game. The remaining canteen cards stay face down and will not be revealed until they are drawn. Finally, take the year cards and shuffle them. You can see which ones are year cards by the calendar on the back of them. Deal two face down to each player. The players then look at their cards secretly, select one to keep and one to discard, all the while keeping everything face down so that no one else on the board knows which cards you have selected. These year cards give you a personal goal to accomplish by the end of the game, which will then give you bonus victory points. The only other cards in the box are these wolf cards. They are used only in solo play and should be returned to the box for two to five player games. Now we're going to build our first trail. Go ahead and remove the 10 trail site tiles from the game box and start them into two stacks. One stack will contain five basic sites, each with a tent on the lower right hand side, and the other stack will contain four advanced sites, which have a tent along with a star. There's also this one unique site which is used only in a 4 or 5 player game, shown by the plus 4 by the tent. If you're playing a 4 or 5 player game, put it in with the basic tiles. But since today we're doing a 2 player game, we'll remove it from the game. Now shuffle the 4 advanced sites and make a face down stack without looking at any tiles and keep it near the game board. Then randomly draw the top advanced site and add it to the 5 basic sites. Now we have a new stack of six sites, five basic and one advanced. Take this stack now and shuffle it face down. Now we are ready to make our first trail. With this stack of sticks, we'll take our first site and flip it down here on the left. And then going left to right, we'll reveal one site at a time. There should be five basic sites in this first trail along with one advanced site. Once we get to the end here, we will place the trail end, and also at the very beginning, we will put the trail head tile. Parks also comes with these awesome log shaped storage containers. Each one contains some sunshine, water, trees, mountains, and wildlife tokens, as well as some photos. If one ever runs out, feel free to pass resources back and forth between them, and simply place them somewhere conveniently in reach of the players. Each player should now place the hikers their color on the trailhead tile here. Also, we need to flip the top card of the season's deck. We'll be playing four total seasons, so each season this card will change. The center here shows an special effect that will only take place for your current season. We're going to ignore that for right now, so it makes more sense later. But if you look at the lower right, there's also a weather pattern. In this case, sunshine, water, sunshine, water. Starting with the second sight, not the first sight, also not the trailhead, but the second site, begin placing that pattern. Sunshine, water, sunshine, water, 
sunshine, and simply continue until you run out of tiles. In this case, we stop here. You do not place one on the trail end tile. Now we're ready to play the game. The main way this works is players will be moving their hikers down the trail in the direction of the trail end tile. The player with the green first hiker marker goes first. In this case, the blue player. The blue player must move in the direction of the trail end tile, but they may move any number of spaces they like. So for example, this worker may move one space to this mountain region and simply collect a mountain token. Or if they would like, they can move all the way to the end here and get two water tokens associated with that action. As long as they are moving at least one space, any space is available to them. Also, you'll notice the weather pattern left these tokens on these spaces. So if a player was to go here, for example, not only would they get the two sunshine tokens associated with that space, but they could also take this additional sunshine and put all of those into their hand. Now the player seen to their left, in this case, the pink player, is ready to take their turn. They have the same movement rules. They must move at least one space in the direction of the trail end and can move as many spaces as they like, except they may not move into the space of a hiker that is already on the trail. So for example, this would be okay. This is not an okay move, but they can move here, 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 or even the trail end tile. So let's say this person goes to the forest, collecting one forest token here, then also the sunshine token. Now play simply continues to the left. In a two player game, that means we are back to blue. Same movement rules apply. The blue player may select either one of his hikers, the one in the back or the one in the front, and move them at least one or up to as many spaces down the trail as they would like. So this back worker could go to the mountains and collect the mountain region. They could not go to the sunshine region because even though it's their own color, you cannot move into a space with another hiker. They could move here, could move here, or they could choose to move the front hiker all the way down here, collect the bonus, and then the two water associated with that space. We'll talk about this tile in just a moment, but before we do, there's a few things to take note of. The first thing to note is how to use your campfires that you began the game with. Let's say the blue player goes here and gets the two sunshine tokens associated with that space, and also the bonus one from the weather. Now on pink's turn, they really, really, really want sunshine. They are actually allowed to go into the space and still claim the two sunshine. Note that the weather sunshine's gone, but the two sunshine available to action is actually okay to take as long as their fire is lit. At that point, since they have taken this action into the blue space, they would flip their campfire over to the extinguished side to show they have now used their campfire. Now on their next turn, they cannot move into the blue space since they do not have a campfire to use. In order for a hiker to move into a space, the player must be able to take the action associated with that space. Now on the basic tiles, that is typically not an issue. We will see an example of some of the advanced tiles where that could come up. On a slightly related note, the resources or tokens in the game are actually limited. So in this particular case, there are no force token trees left in either of the logs out here. So in this case, the pink player actually cannot, or the blue player cannot go into this space since they cannot take the action associated with that space. Also, there's a hand limit of 12 resources per player at a time. If you ever end your turn with more than 12 resources, you must simply discard down the 12 at the end of your turn. It's important to note that this happens at the end of the player's turn. So in this case, the blue player already has 12 tokens. They may travel to the sunshine space, collect two sunshine if they would like, and then choose two of any token to discard at the end of their turn. In this example, let's say a water and a forest. Once a player moves onto the end of the trail site, two things happen right away. For starters, they relight their campfire right away. Also, they will place their hiker on one of these spots and take the actions associated with that spot. The top action here is reserve a park. If a player chooses this spot, they may select one of the three parks from the top here or a random park from the draw pile to reserve it for themselves. They have not visited this park, but they simply place it sideways in front of themselves. Remember that it is reserved only for them. They do not pay the cost associated with the park as they have not visited it yet. If they select it from one of the three revealed parks, immediately reveal a new park. Any number of players may go to this action location to reserve a park. 
throughout the course of the season. But the first player there actually goes on the far right and now either retains the first hiker marker or steals it from the other player if the other player is in possession of it. The player with the green first hiker marker will take the first action of the next turn. Also, at the end of the game, it's worth one victory point to be in possession of the green first hiker marker. The second action spot is to buy gear, as shown by the backpack here. Remember the beginning of the video where we made the stack and set up three gear cards? Well, now we're finally going to get use them. The player must be able to pay the associated cost, either two sunshine, one sunshine, or could it be three, depending on what is flipped out. If a player does so, they get to place this gear card in their player area and exclusively use that benefit for the remainder of the game. In this case, parks cost two less sunshine to visit for the rest of the game. You then will flip a new gear card out for later players. As with reserve park action, any number of hikers may be on the buy gear spot. But the first one here gets to place their hiker here, which gives them a one sunshine discount on whatever gear they're buying this turn. In a four or five player game, there's actually two of these spots, so the first two hikers may have the discount. And finally, the big one, visit a park. A number of players can go to this action, and there's not necessarily a benefit of being the first one there, except you get first dibs on the parks that are out there. When a player goes to the visit a park action spot, they choose from one of the three revealed parks up here, or one reserved park from their hand, and pays the cost of the bottom and visits that park. In this case, the blue player could choose to go to the Everglades National Park, spending two trees, one sunshine, and three water associated with that park. After those tokens are spent and returned to the box, the players would take the Everglades National Park and place it in their player area face up. Since the blue player in this case has a reserve park, they could choose to flip it right side up, pay the cost, and now have this as one of their visited parks in their hand. Now remember, just because the blue player has placed a hiker on the trail end spot does not mean the season's over. The pink has two hikers left and the blue still has another one which will continue to take actions. So pink could get this mountain region, blue could jump ahead to the water, this back pink hiker could jump all the way to the end and buy a park, flip out a new one. The season is still not over yet. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Remember the canteen cards that each player were given at the beginning of the game? Let's learn about those now. When gaining a water token on your turn, you may instead of placing all of them in your hand, place one of them into your canteen, filling it, and taking the associated action. In this case, a tree. Or on Pink's turn, it can move here, get this water and also the tree associated with this spot, but then place their water into the canteen and get two sunshine tokens instead. So essentially your canteen is sacrificing a water for typically a better token or action below it. Now a couple things. You have to use water that you gained on your current turn. So in this example, if Blue went here and gained a forest, he could not then place a water from his hand into the canteen. It must be a water token that was gained on the current turn. Also, once a water is placed in the canteen, the canteen remains filled until the next season. There's no way to get the water out early and then take the canteen action again. Now, as we're going to see in a moment, there's actually a way to pick up more canteen cards, and there are no restrictions on how you fill these. So for example, if a blue player went to a spot with two water, he could fill both canteen cards in one turn and the associated bonuses. In this case, a forest and a mountain. But also, the blue player, if he went to a spot, let's say for example, this spot, and picked up one water and also the forest associated, he could choose to fill one of the canteens now and then save the other canteen to be filled later. Remember, these canteens will be dumped at the end of the season and will be used again in the next season. Now let's talk about end of the season. Once all but one hiker has gone onto the end of the trail tile and taken that action, the final hiker left on the trail must move immediately to the end on their turn and take whichever action they like. Important to note here, this does not skip the final hiker's turn. They still are allowed to move and take an action. They're just not allowed to go move, 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 and take several actions. It forces them to the end of the trail on their next turn. Also important to note, if Blue were to move onto this buy a park tile, the last two pink hikers 
are still out here. They are not forced to move to the end of the trail. This is not one hiker. This is two different hikers of the same color. The pink can then take their time taking actions one at a time on their turn and continue to do so until one of their hikers finally moved on to one of these action spots at the end of the trail and then the other one would be forced to the end. Now that all hikers are at the end of the trail, you do three quick things. The first thing is the player with the camera in their possession may discard any one token to take a picture. This is not required, but typically a good idea. This picture is going to be worth one point at the end of the game. Players then discard any water that was in their canteens and return all hikers back to the trailhead. Now that all hikers are back on the trailhead, we're ready to begin a new season. Discard any weather bonus tokens that were unused and then pick up all of the tiles from the trail. Leaving, of course, the trailhead and the trail end. Now remember this stack of advanced tiles we said over here earlier. Now draw a second one of those, add it to the pile, and then shuffle, including the two advanced tiles now, all the tiles together. Then just like the beginning, we'll flip these over one at a time, randomly, to form a new trail. At the end, we will have to move over the trail ender to make room for the new location. Also, we'll no longer need the season card for the first round, but now we move on to the second season. In this case, we have a new bonus in the middle here for this round, and also a new weather pattern. The weather pattern here is sun, sun, water, sun, sun, water, over and over and over again to the end of the trail. So again, starting on the second site, not the first, not the trail, the second site, we're going to do the pattern sun, sun, water, sun, sun, water. The pattern continues a little longer this time because there are more tiles in play. And just like before, the player with the green first hiker marker takes the first action of the next season. Players should still have all the tokens from previous rounds, as well as any parks they purchase, canteens, gear cards, and all their campfires should be flipped up the lit position because the last action is always moving someone to the trail's end. Now the next season begins. Players, just like before, take turns moving down the trail and collecting the associated bonuses. At the end of the fourth season, when the final hiker has gone onto the trail end tile and taken their actions, the game is over. There's no need to set up for the next season. At this point, there's nothing else to do except the player with the camera may one last time spend any token to take a picture, which they definitely should do. Now before we get into end game scoring, let's take a closer look at these site tiles. Many of the basic tiles of the tent in the bottom right corner are very simple to understand. This one simply gained two sunshine tokens from the supply. Here we gain two water tokens from the supply. A single forest and on this one we gain a single mountain. This here is by far the most confusing of the basic tiles. You may either draw one canteen card, in which case you will draw a new canteen card and place it next to your other one, or you may spend two tokens to take a photo, in which case you will steal the camera from the player with the camera and then place one photo in your area, which will be one point at the end of the game. Though if you already have the camera, you'll notice it says one to take a picture. This means that if you go to this site and you have the camera, it only costs you one to take a photo and obviously you keep the camera. Also, remember the camera has one photo you ought to take at the end of each season. Here's one of our advanced tiles, which says a player may spend one of any token to get a wildlife token. Now, what does this mean? A player may spend one of any token, meaning they could spend a sunshine, they could spend a water and change it out for one of these wildlife tokens. Now the wildlife tokens are all unique in shape, but all do the same thing. They count as wilds. So if a player wanted to buy this park, which costs three water, one sunshine, two mountains, but they only had three water, one sunshine, and one mountain, they could then spend a wildlife token, basically to act as a wild and cover the cost of the mountain they don't have. Here's another advanced tile, which says a player may give any one token in exchange for any one token, not including wildlife tokens. They can also do this two times, meaning a player can change out water and get a mountain, change out another water and get another mountain, or change out a water and a sunshine for two trees, any combination of one for one, except no wildlife tokens. This advanced site is pretty powerful. It says you may buy or reserve a park, or you may buy gear. So this basically allows you to take end of the trail actions early.
Okay, so this is the final advanced tile. This simply states that you may spend one water and then use the action of another site that's occupied by a different hiker. This could be your own hiker or this could be your opponent's hiker. So you spend one water and now you may use an action of another spot even though it's occupied by a different hiker. And then finally we have the four or five player only tile which is just a combination, one sunshine and one water. Now the center of the season tile should make sense to us as well. Not only is there a weather pattern but there's also a bonus for this season only. In this case, gain one water if you gain any trees on your turn. Parks cost one sunshine less to visit for this season only. Gear cards will also make a lot more sense now. For example, parks cost one tree less. Or this one, water can be used in place of mountains with parks. Most of the canteen cards you can gain are pretty self-explanatory. Place a water, get a tree. Place a water, get a mountain. Place a water, get two sunshine. Some are slightly more interesting though. Place a water and perform this action. Change out one token for any other token, up to two times. Wildlife tokens exclude it. The end of the year, personal goals you were given at the beginning of the game will make a lot more sense now as well. Let's say you were dealt these two and had to pick one secretly. The first one here says visit three parks worth four or five points. If you're able to do that, you get two bonus points at the end of the game. Or visit five parks worth four to five points, you get three points. Important notes, do not add this together if you get the better goal. You just simply get three points instead of two. Or you could have chosen visit six parts with tree symbols, two points, or visit eight parks with a tree symbol and get three points. Now we are ready for final scoring. Final scoring will consist of four categories. First of all, the parks you visited will be the primary way you score points. You will add up all the values of the lower left-hand side of your parks you visited. Keep in mind, reserved parks do not count. So if this park was reserved but never later purchased, it is not counted in final scoring. Also, every photo you took counts for one point. Also, the green first hiker marker counts for one point. Finally, you flip over your year cards and see if you receive the benefit on the back. Now, only the player with the year card is allowed to receive this benefit. So in this case, visit five parks with sunshine. This player would say, I got one, two, three, four, five. So they would have five, which is enough to qualify for two bonus points. It wouldn't matter if Pink also had visited this. This is a personal goal for you to visit those parks. And that is it. Everything you need to know to know how to play parks. I want to point out that in the back of the rule book, there's a page of common questions. There's also rules for solo play, which I'm going to cover in a separate video. If you have any questions at all, please ask in the comment section down below and consider subscribing to the channel to see more rule teachers like this and also some playthroughs. See you then.